for another great healing school. And uh, we obviously welcome everyone here, everyone online. God bless you. Hallelujah. And uh, we're thankful for what the Lord is doing in our midst. Let's go to Hebrews 11 is where we will begin today. And uh, we want to remind you that this upcoming Sunday night will be a great healing service here uh, in the sanctuary here at Faith Builders. And uh, we're believing God for some wonderful things. Uh, healing Waters meeting every third Sunday. And uh, let's pray and we'll get started. Father, we thank you today for this wonderful opportunity that we have to come together around this all-important subject of healing. And we thank you, Lord, that we're seeing in your word and realizing even more and more clearly and concisely what your will is concerning this situation. And Lord, we thank you that as the word goes forth that many will be touched by the power of God. We thank you, Lord, that the, the, the healing contained within the word of God will flow into the lives of your people and that there will be a manifestation of the goodness of God in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hebrews chapter 11, and we're going to read one verse, verse 1. And we've been teaching uh, through and, and, and using as a basic outline F.F. Uh, F. Bosworth's wonderful book, Christ the Healer. And of course, uh, uh, taking some points from it, and I'll say some things that, that uh, on my own, but uh, we're going to look today specifically at the past tenses, the past tenses of God's Word. The past tenses of God's Word. And in Hebrews 11.1, 1, familiar passage of Scripture, but it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of of things not seen. Uh, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, appropriating faith is simply taking and using what God offers to us. To appropriate faith is just taking and using what God offers to us. Uh, we're going to deal somewhat with this subject of faith today, but uh, something the Lord told me a long time ago about faith, especially our calling uh, to teach faith, was that uh, faith, and I've said it over the years, faith is not hard, it's just different. It's not difficult, it's just different. And it's, uh, it's one of those things where it can be so easily overcomplicated that people miss the simplicity of it. So faith then, appropriating it, is taking and using what God offers us. So faith is the substance of things, notice, hope for. Now hope is expecting something. Hope is a picture. Uh, but it's expecting something to happen sometime in the future. You know, if you, if you ask someone, uh, are you going on this trip? Well, I hope so. That means maybe, I might. I hope I am. Uh, I would like to. Uh, hope is a picture of what you desire. This is what I want. This is, I want to be whole. I want to be well. I want to be better. I want my body to be healed. And understand that you can't accurately or appropriately use faith without hope, but hope is simply a picture. It's simply a desire, a blueprint of what I want. Faith is taking right now what God offers. And we'll look at this even more uh, in depth as we move forward. Faith is taking it right now. And uh, always define that phrase because a lot of times people will say, you'll say, well, do you have it? Well, I have it by faith. What they mean is they have a picture of it. They're hoping. But remember, taking something and wanting something are different. If I take it, I take it now. If I want it, it's always in the future. All right? I've had people say, well, I want to believe God. Well, there's nothing stopping you. Just believe Him. I mean, there, there's nothing stopping us. And uh, in John chapter 19 and verse 31, verse, familiar passage of Scripture 
Well, I believe it's a familiar passage of Scripture. My wife has told me that many times I say it's a familiar passage of Scripture, and it's, to me it's familiar, but not to other people. So, but we've, we've heard this because Jesus is on the cross, and here in verse 30, uh, it says, When he had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So it is finished. The work is done. It is completed as God sees it. All right? When Jesus said it is finished, it's not just his earthly ministry. It is what God has called him to do. The, the completion of everything required to bring about redemption at this point in his earthly ministry is finished. As God sees it, it is completed. So God expects us as believers, as people that are believers in His Word and in His ability to consider as done what Jesus says was done. I have to consider it finished, a completed work, because Jesus said it was done. And so the past tenses then of God's Word, it means it's a settled final decision of His will. It is finished. If someone says, well, you know, did you go to such and such place and, and eat dinner yesterday? Well, yes, I did. I went there yesterday and I ate dinner. Well, I'm saying that in the past tense. I wouldn't sit there at the table uh, eating dinner and say, well, I ate dinner. I'm eating dinner. I'm in the process of it. But to have done something in the past denotes something was done. It was finished. It was completed. In Galatians 3. Uh, the Apostle Paul makes this statement. That we've read probably numerous times, but it says here in verse 13, Christ has, King James says hath, has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having been made a curse for us, for it's written, cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. So notice where he placed our redemption from the curse of the law in the past tense. Christ has redeemed me. Christ has bought me back or bought me out from under or purchased me from the slavery of. All right? And he says it's in the past tense. So I have to do the same thing. It's not an issue of being healed or will be healed or shall be healed or would like to be healed. It's an issue of receiving it. Remember that faith receives what God offers to me now. So I receive it now. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. That's in the past tense. I have to do the same. No, I've been redeemed from that. Now, that's where, that's where standing in faith comes in. You're appropriating it by faith. Christ has done this. This is done. It is completed. And the curse of the law, we know, included disease. Some theologians and scholars say every disease I don't know that I've read through Deuteronomy 28 and saw every disease, but I know I saw a bunch. I mean, it talks over and over about the things that we that were under that curse of the law, and the Bible says Christ redeemed me from that. Now, the reason that's so important is to understand and to, to, to appropriate that by faith, that if it was done in the past tense, then it's completed, it's finished. All right? In Matthew 8, Matthew chapter 8, it's important to keep that concept in your mind of the past tense. In 
in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 16, it says, When the evening was come, they brought unto him Jesus, or to Jesus, many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his word, notice, and healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself, notice, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. So once again we see he took them, past tense. It doesn't say he takes them, he took them. Someone will say, well I got healed and the Lord took my sickness. No, he had already taken it, you just stepped into the, right, to the reality of it. If, if, if I say that I'm waiting on a promise of God, then the responsibility then, I'm placing it on the promiser. But that's, God's not wait, we're not waiting on Him. He, he has already done what He said He would do. It's just like salvation. And I'll make this statement probably a little later. But how many of us would have been saved earlier than we were had we received the gift earlier? So God was not, we were not waiting on him, he was waiting on us in that regard. So himself took, past tense, our infirmities and bare our sicknesses in the past tense. Well, people will say, but this was before Jesus went to the cross. This was before he received stripes. But Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It was, it was the, when Jesus made the decision to come as a sacrifice for the sins of the world and for the redemptive uh, rights of God's people, it was considered by God to be a done issue, a completed issue. The only thing that had to be was the physical walking out of it. All right? So he took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses in the past tense. Then in 1 Peter chapter 2. Hallelujah. And uh, verse 24. Notice again it says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body in, on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes, here's the phrase, you were healed. At, at what point? When the stripes were laid on his back. And now there are people that will say, well, what that means is that it was through his stripes that healing comes. What that means is that it was through his stripes that healing came. All right? You, it does, it, I mean, it does come through those stripes, but it's already completed. He'll never be striped again. <laughs> it was the stripes that he took on his back 2,000 years ago or over now that produced this healing. And so we have to appropriate those past tenses of God's word. You were healed. Because the enemy fights to keep you in the present. Well, if you were healed, you wouldn't feel this way. But I have to keep him in those past tenses. No, I was healed when Jesus took stripes on his back. I was healed at that moment. The enemy fights to keep us in the, in the present tense. Always, always what we're facing right now. Hallelujah. But when you keep him in the reality of the word that this is a completed issue, then he begins to lose his power over that situation. So the fact that God puts a promise in the past tense, here's what it does. It authorizes us to do the same thing. If he put it in the past tense, then I can put it in the past tense. I'm not waiting to be healed. I am healed. All right, see, that, that, that is the difference between faith and physical sense knowledge. 
I'm not waiting to be healed. I am healed. Why are you healed? Because I was healed when Jesus bore stripes on his back. That's when I was healed. That's when it occurred. Amen. That's the difference between faith and sense knowledge. That's the difference. Uh, that's where the difference comes in, how you can stand in faith in spite of the, the physical symptoms you may have, in spite of the report that you may have. Those things are our periphery to the real issue. The issue is I was healed when Jesus bore stripes on his back. Well, when are you going to feel it? That's not the issue. The issue is I'm healed. That, that's, what, that's what takes hold. That's where faith takes hold. And then faith will eventually begin to manifest the completion of it in my life. The, the point is, is it's not denying. It's not just saying, you know, I feel good when I don't feel good. As a matter of fact, there's no, listen, there's no less faith in someone says, are you feeling, you know, do you feel bad today? I know you've been dealing with this. Well, yes, I do feel bad. But that doesn't mean I'm not healed. And a lot of times people think that it's more of a faith statement to say, no, 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 I don't feel bad, I feel great. Well, now they're lying. <laughs> Amen. I mean, right? I I've seen people before sick as a dog, just sick as a dog. I don't know how sick a dog is, but that's sick. And, and someone would say, how you feeling? Oh, I'm fine. I feel great. They didn't feel great. They needed to go home and go to bed. They needed to take some medicine. Amen. Now, there would have been no less faith in saying, no, you know what? I don't feel good, but in the name of Jesus, I'm well. I've told people before, you just stay home. Don't come to church. Stay home. You're sick. And we, we don't need you giving everybody else what you have. Amen. Now, People will say, but that's a lack of faith. That's not a lack of faith. A lack of faith is this, that you're putting off into the future what God says is yours now. That's a lack of faith. All right, well, one day I'm going to be healed. I, hope, I pray that the Lord will heal me. I hope that God will. One of these days, I'm going to see the manifestation. Well, but that's not faith. Sounds like faith, but it's not faith. Faith is, I have it. And I don't care, Lord help me say this right, and I don't care if I ever see the manifestation of it. And if I leave this world with this, I'll leave saying I'm healed. Amen. And I've had people say, yeah, but no, what a way to go. What a way to go. What a way to leave this world saying I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Amen. Because that is appropriating what he says is already Mind, that's exercising faith, is to place in the past tense what God places in the past tense. Amen. Now, in Mark 11, Mark chapter 11. It was E.W. Kenyon that said one time, he said, you don't want to let the tenses whip you. The tenses whip you. And I've said that over the years, many years ago I, I learned that. that. That's what the enemy tries to whip you with, is the tenses. Well, if you're healed, why do you feel bad now? See, it's the tense, now. Well, you've got to keep directing him back to what's already been done. I'm already healed. I'm already set free. I'm already delivered. You don't let the tenses whip you. All right? Well, if you're healed now, what are you going to do tomorrow? Well, it doesn't matter what tomorrow brings. I'm already healed. What if you get up in the morning and you feel worse? It doesn't change what's already been done. I'm, I'm already healed. I'm already, I'm already delivered by the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. So it says in Mark eleven twenty four. 24, notice this verse. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now, the Greek rendering, uh, the Weist Bible says, On this account I'm saying to you, all things, whatever you're praying and asking for, be believing, notice, that you have received them. That you have received them, and they shall be yours. Now, someone can say, well, 
if I have received them, then it's already mine, and it says they shall be yours. It just simply means this, they're not really yours till you take them. It's not really mine till I receive it. And what a lot of people are doing is they want to say that healing is theirs, but they don't receive it. I can say something is mine, but not really receive it. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Remember, they have spoken to the mountain, told the mountain to be cast into the sea. And he said, whatever you say, if you don't doubt, it will come to pass. You'll have whatever you say. He said, therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, desire, hope, whatever you have a picture of, when you pray, believe that you have received them. Believe when you pray that you've already received it. You've already taken it. And you'll have it. Hallelujah. So it's after we believe we have received that the healing power will go to work. Have I believed that I have received it? Now, again, faith is personal and faith is honest. Only, the only person that knows if they have believed is the person that's, for lack of a better term, believing. I, I can look at everyone here today, if I could see everybody online, I can't, but I, I look at the people here in the audience. I don't know if you have believed that you have received. And I know there are people who say, well, if you believed you received, you wouldn't, nece you wouldn't necessarily be dealing with it. No, that's not necessarily the truth. That the Bible is replete with examples of people that believe they received, and a short time later or some time later, they received the manifestation in their body. When Jesus uh, dealt with the nobleman and dealt with that man's son, he came to Jesus and he said, my child is sick. And Jesus said, uh, you know, you remember what he said? He said, an evil and adulterous generation looks for a sign. And the man said, Lord, come down. My child's dying. And Jesus said, go your way. Your son's well. Well, he was a day's journey from getting back home. And the next day, the next afternoon, he showed up and they said, your son is well. He said, when did he begin to amend? When did he start getting better? And they said, yesterday at one o'clock. And it says he remembered. That's when Jesus said, your son will live. So about 24 hours later, we see the manifestation. But when was that boy healed? When Jesus said he was well. When did they get the full manifestation? Some few hours or many hours later. So he received it when Jesus said it, but he didn't see it till the next day. So when someone says, I believe I have it now, I take it now, they're receiving the gift now. Now, whether they see the manifestation or the complete uh, fruition of that immediately or not, is not the issue. Do you have it? It's just a matter of time. Hallelujah. Now, we have to continue in something. We have to continue in praise and thanksgiving to God for the fact that we're healed. I have to continue to praise and thanksgiving are one of the highest forms of faith. I'm believing God, I'm thanking God, I'm praising God, I'm glorifying God for my healing. Amen. And, 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 that's, and that's why, if I can say it this way, that there may be people that know what you're dealing with as far as your health goes, but that's why it's so important not to consistently and constantly broadcast everything you're dealing with. Because it can hinder your faith. All right? Because you... you, you as, as I'm praising and thanking God and glorifying God and thanking Him, the more people I've told, the more people I've talked with about what I'm dealing with, the more potential there is for them to be saying things that are going against what I'm believing for. Amen. There, there, there are things that I've dealt with in the past I've just told my wife. And then there's things that I've dealt with that I've told people that are close to me. But the point that I'm making is this, is as you continue in praise and thanksgiving, to God, you're establishing the fact that you're healed. I'm thanking you because I am healed. Once you have believed, it's no longer, Lord, thank you for healing me. It's, Lord, thank you that I'm healed. 
I'm, I'm set free by the power of God. Amen. Faith laughs at impossibilities. Praise is proof of my faith. Because I've already received it. So when we believe that God has heard our prayer before the healing is manifested, that's the soil that the Word can produce fruit in. Is when you believe that God has heard your prayer before the healing is manifested. Well, I believe you've heard me. Well, there's a wonderful scripture uh, in uh, John chapter 11. This is the uh, account where Jesus went back to Bethany and was dealing with Mary and Martha. Lazarus sisters. Now Lazarus has died. And uh, Jesus has went back to, according to what he said, he said he was going to wake him up. All right, the, the disciples said, where are we going? He said, well, we've got to go back. Our friend Lazarus is, Lazarus is sleeping. And he said, we've got to go wake him up. And they said, well, Lord, if he's sleeping, he's doing good. And Jesus then had to say, well, he died. <clears throat> All right. And I've heard people try to uh, paint that. You know, sometimes as, as, as uh, word of faith people, we try to tend to take scriptures in the Bible and paint them. You know, and I've heard people say, well, Jesus never admitted that Lazarus died. Well, how much more admission can you get that Lazarus died than Jesus said Lazarus died? <laughs> I mean... He, he, not only did he die, he had been dead, remember, for four days. And his sister said, Lord, he's decomposing. I mean, that's how dead he was. He was dead, 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 dead. As Jerry Clower said, graveyard dead. All right? <laughs> he, he was dead. So my point in saying that is notice that Jesus had already believed that Lazarus was going to live again. And when you go through these verses, you can see that because over and over again, he tells Mary and Martha, didn't I tell you if you would believe your brother would live again? And they said, well, we know he's going to live again in the resurrection. Jesus said, no, 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 I'm the resurrection. I'm the resurrection and the life. And so then he goes on down here, and you'll remember in verse uh, uh, 25. I'm sorry, I said verse 25. Uh, John chapter 11, verse 40, excuse me. Jesus comes there, and he says in verse 40 to Martha, Said I not unto you that if you would believe, you should see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you, notice, that you have heard me. I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you hear us me always, but because of the people which stood by, I said, I said it, that they may believe that you have sent me. And then you'll remember he said, take away the stone, Lazarus come forth, and Lazarus came forth bound hand and foot. foot. He said, loose him and let him go. Here's what I want you to focus on though. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I thank you that you have heard me. Well, he's saying right there very plainly, I'm not praying for my sake. I know you've heard me. I'm praying for those that are standing around that they might believe. So the prayer of faith is believing that our prayer is heard before the answer materializes. So I thank you that I am healed. I thank you that you heard me when I, when I ask you for it. And I thank you that I am right now, presently healed. Then in 1 John 5, which is really a wonderful summation of, of this point, verse 14 John says, this is the confidence we have in Him. 
Well, what is this confidence? That if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. According to His will. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we desired of Him. So notice He said, if we know He heard us, then we know we have what we have desired. That's so important. Because if God heard you, then you know you have it. That's appropriating faith. Yeah, but how do I have it and I don't see it? Well, wait a minute. The Bible says we know if He hears us, we know we have. If He hears us, we have it. Glory to God. So if we know we heard us, He heard us, then we know we have what we have desired. So when do I have it? Now. Faith is now. Faith is always now. I have it now. Faith refuses to see as a reason for doubting anything contrary to the Word. Anything contrary to the Word. It does not see that as a reason for doubt. And very often in talking about healing, it can be very clichéic. And, uh, you know, people will hear say, you know, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by the Word of God. And that's very true, and we need to hear more of that. But it comes down to have you ask according to His will. If you have, He heard you. If He heard you, you have it. Why? Because that's what the Word says. Hallelujah. If you'll remember in Romans 4, 17, it says concerning what God said to Abraham, it said, I have made you a father of many nations. I have made you. Well, when did God say that? Before Isaac was ever born. When Abraham was still too old to have a child and Sarah was barren, he said, I have made you. It's, it's the same context where Paul brings out that God calls those things that be not as though they were. Calls things that be not as though they were. It doesn't call things that are not as though they are. Or things that are as though they are not calls things that be not as though they were. As though they were. As though that's the way they are. But yet, I don't see it that way. But God says it is that way. So, I always go back to the, to the time of salvation. You know, now, there are people that I know when they got born again, you know, they have testimonies that they immediately felt completely different and everything was changed, and, and you know, the grass looked greener, and the sky looked bluer, and I thank God for those testimonies, and that's a wonderful thing. But you know, then there are people that get saved, and they're like, praise God, I'm saved. The grass doesn't look any greener, the sky doesn't look any bluer, but how did they know they got saved? They just took it. They took it by faith. I remember hearing Billy Graham's testimony, and he went uh, there in uh, North Carolina where he was raised, and they had brought Mordecai Ham in to preach, uh, a meeting and you know Billy Graham went because he was actually uh, upset Mordecai Hammond had ministered and said that there were a bunch of high school students that were visiting a house of ill repute there in the city and uh, had accused him of it and a bunch of them got together to go and and let him know he was wrong and Billy Graham was one of them he had went there because he was mad because this preacher had said this and it tells you something about the state of the youth then and the state of the youth now uh, in that they, they were upset that they were being accused of that. But anyway, he said he went a couple nights, and uh, he said, you know, one night he decided to go and give his life to Christ. And he walked the aisle and gave his life to Christ. And by his own testimony, he said there were no lightning flashes, there were no, no thunderous uh, shakings. He said, I didn't, don't know that I felt any different. He said, but here's what I do know. I meant every word I said. 
and I took it by faith. When God said, I have made you a father of many nations, Abraham just reached out and took that. I am a father of many nations right now. That's what I am. And then the Bible says that what followed that was the manifestation of what he believed he already was. Hallelujah. Now, I have made you the father of many nations. So there is, well, let me use this illustration. There's a person in my life, somebody very close to me, and they have told me I'm in their will and that I have an inheritance. This, this, they, they have told me that personally. You know, you're in, I've put you in my will, and when I move to heaven, you have an inheritance coming. Well, I've not seen it as of yet. But here's the thing. I know it's there. Because they've told me it's there. You know, if, if uh, I called you on the phone and said, you know, uh, have you checked your mail yet? Well, no, I haven't checked my mail yet. Uh, I haven't been out yet. Well, I wanted you to know, I didn't want to wake you up this morning. I came by early. But I put a check for $10,000 in your mailbox. Well, I told you I put it in there. Right? You, you have not seen it yet. You've not felt it yet. You've not went to the bank yet. But depending on whose word you're hearing, and I, and I hope you trust my word, but depending on whose word you're hearing, if it's somebody you trust, then you know that right now in your mailbox is a check. For $10,000. All you've got to do is go get it. Right? It's, it's the same way with appropriating my healing. Once I know that God said I have it, all I've got to do is go get it. I've just got to go appropriate it. Hallelujah. And uh, so faith then, we can see, is the title deed of things that are, hope not, that are not seen yet. They're not seen yet. But I have the title deed. If I have the title deed, it doesn't matter if I see the thing I have the title to. I have the thing because I have the title. Hallelujah. Now, you don't have to turn here, but you can remember in Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, the Lord said to Joshua, He said, See, I have... Get, it, actually, verse 1 says, Jericho was tightly shut up because of the children of Israel. It says, None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into your hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Now, but it says in verse 1, Jericho was tightly shut up. The gates were shut. Nobody was going out. Nobody was coming in. And yet God said to Joshua, With the walls so thick that chariots could race on top, the, 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 the people jeering them from the walls, God said to Joshua, I've given you, I've given, I've given you the city. Didn't look like it. They still have all their defenses there. They still have the, the thick gates, the thick walls. And God has told Joshua and the people, you know, to march around the walls once a day for six days and the seventh day, March 7. But the point is, is this, is God said, I have given it to you. I have given, past tense, while the city was still shut up. So I believe I have received my healing when perhaps the pain is still in my body. I believe I have received my healing when the symptoms may still be there. But I have received it. Why? Because God called me, for lack of a better illustration, and said, hey, I came by your house today and put a healing check in your mailbox. Now think about that. If God said that to you, I came by your house this morning and I put a check of healing in your mailbox. All you got to do is go get it. I'm going to hang up the phone, go out the door and go get my, my healing check. So he has given it to me. It is mine. Hallelujah. Now, again, I'll quote this to you. Luke 17, 14. You'll remember the lepers came to Jesus. And it says, they cried afar off, Master, have mercy on us. And it says, Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw them and said, told them to be whole. And told him to go to the priest and offer that sacrifice for cleansing. And it says, as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. Well, what did they do? They put their faith in the past tense. 
Jesus said, Be whole, be cleansed. And it says they went on that word. Well, it doesn't matter if it was a tenth of a second, 30 seconds, an hour. After they acted on that word, that word was still in the past tense. The moment I speak something and move on, now that's in the past tense. We started this, this healing school uh, 20 minutes, well, uh, 40 minutes ago. So whatever I said at the beginning is in the past tense. It may only be 40 minutes past tense, but it's still past tense. When Jesus said, go your way, you're cleansed, offer the gift to the priest, they acted on that word. Well, the moment he said it, it was now in the past tense. So they acted on the past tense before seeing it. And it was manifested while they were acting on their faith. As they went, they were cleansed. Glory to God. If healing was only promised, then we would have to wait for the one who promised to fulfill his promise. And the responsibility would be on him if it was just promised. Now, I've had people say that, and, and please don't misunderstand me. I know that, that, that sometimes people may not understand, but I've had people say, I'll say, well, why do you know you're healed? Because I have a promise. But remember what a promise is. A promise in our mindset is something somebody is going to do for me. Not something that's already done. If, if, and you don't hear a lot about this anymore, but you know they used to have uh, promissory notes. Which, which in reality, our currency, our paper currency, that used to be, the, I mean, that's what it was, a promissory note. Someone would take a $5 bill down and, and pay for something. Well, that, then that bill was cashed in and that merchant would get $5 gold from the U.S. government. Well, of course, we went away from the gold standard many years ago, but the point is it was a promissory note. If that person had a $5 bill, then it was a promissory note that there was gold to cover it. It was a promise. But notice what they had to do. They had to take it down and cash it in. There was no monetary value in it immediately because it was just a promise. You know, if somebody says, you know, uh, I, I promise I'm, watch, I'm going to do this. Well, there's nothing in the Word where God said, I promise I'm going to heal you. In, in, in the book of Exodus, the very first time we see God call Himself Jehovah Rapha, He said, I am the Lord who heals you. Not will heal you, who heals you. I, I'm the one that does it. But notice this. So if it was only promised, we'd have to wait for the one who promised to fulfill his promise, and that responsibility would be on him. But healing is an offered gift as well as a promised gift. As well as a promise. And because of that, it has to be accepted. A gift has to be accepted. And the responsibility for receiving it is on us. And what that does then, and this is important, it clears God of all responsibility for any failures. When someone says, I don't know why God didn't choose to heal that person, it shows they don't understand God. They don't understand the promise. Amen. I, I knew a dear lady that... Uh, I, I knew her for a number of years. She was in the Kansas location when we first started that church. Wonderful woman. If there's anybody that I knew that loved God, that knew God, she did. I mean, loved the Lord with all of her heart. And uh, got afflicted with cancer. And uh, just immediately, well, there were several things. Number one, she was in a lot of fear about it. But secondly, it was always this. It, the statement that was made was always this. I know God can heal me. I know God can heal me. Well, that statement, although well-meaning, is saying this. I know God can, but I also know He hasn't. 
Now, when you're dealing with people in life and death situations and any type of sickness, you know, the, the Lord, help me with this. The um, propensity, if you will, the, the, uh, the way that, that, that you, people are just trained to deal with individuals that are dealing with diseases like that is, you know, first of all, hushed tones. You know, well, well, what's wrong with it? Well, the doctor says it's cancer. Just get, you know, I mean, the man knows he's got cancer, you know, but then it's to deal with, now, brother, we're going to pray for you, and we're, we're going to believe God, watch, that he'll heal you. If I'm not cautious with that, and I've seen it so many times. Prayer will be made and nothing will change because we're still believing God will. God can if God will. But I've seen it over and over again. The lights come on in people's lives. When you walk in a hospital room, you say, look, I'm here to pray for you because God's healed you. He paid the price already and he wants you to receive his healing gift. And will you receive it? Hallelujah. And, and, and I've, seen people, I've seen people say, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. And I've seen people that didn't know how to take it. But the point is, is it's not just something promised. It's, it's something, it's a gift that's offered to us. Amen. The only reason, I said this earlier, the only reason we weren't saved a year earlier than we were is that we didn't take what God had provided a year earlier. That's it. And was offering to us. God was not making us wait. God wasn't making me wait. You know, people will say, well, you know, but he didn't deal with me until that time. No, that's wrong. He did. He did deal with you before that time. There, there's nobody that God hasn't dealt with over and over again. It's when I finally decided to receive it. Now, I know, I know that what this sounds like is most of the responsibilities being placed on me. Most of the responsibility is on me. It is on me to receive it. It's, it's like the guy, I may have told you this story, and if I have, the gift of redundancy is in operation. But uh, uh, this old boy, he was, he was in this community, and he was known just to be sorry, just to be sorry. Now, we're in the South. Y'all know what sorry is. You know, somebody said, you know, what's that guy's problem? Oh, he's sorry. You know what that means. No good, lazy, won't work, all right? And, uh, uh, I mean, that, the, the, the men I grew up around working, that was one thing they'd always say. They'd say, buddy, don't you, that's what they called me, don't, don't be sorry. You don't want to be sorry. And so this guy was just sorry. He wouldn't work. And every winter, they had to take care of him. The people in the community had to take care of him. And uh, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't work. He wouldn't plant a crop. And so they were always having to take care of him. So they decided one year they got up a petition and just decided that what they were going to do is just put the guy in a coffin, take him out, and bury him alive. You know, he's, he's sorry. We're just, we're going to take... That's just an extreme story, all right? But uh, so they, they put him in a coffin and didn't have the lid on it yet, put him up in the, in the wagon and uh, are, are taking him out of town. And uh, so finally this one guy came in. He didn't know what was going on. He said, oh, well, what's going on here? And uh, they said, well, this guy's sorry. He said he won't work and, and he won't plant a crop and now it's winter and he don't have enough corn and he don't have this. And uh, the guy said, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. He said, uh, he said uh, I'll help him out. And they said, you'll help him out. You'll take responsibility for him. Yeah, I will. He said, I'll give him enough corn to get through the winter and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, do what he needs to do. And the old boy was in the coffin, and he raised up out of that coffin, and he looked at the guy, and he said, is the corn shucked? <laughs> and the guy said, well, no, it's not. And he just laid down and said, drive on, boys, drive on. <laughs> hey, that, that's how a lot of people are. They want it. If it's all gift wrapped, they want it if all of the work is done. You know, I want God to just come and heal me. Well, he, he has, he wants to, and he will. 
But I can't be like that guy and, and just raise up and say, well, is it gift wrap for me? Is there anything I have to do? Yes, I do. Amen. And those same people will say, well, God will heal me when he's ready. Or in his own good time. They'll even say things like, well, you know, I'm just accepting this as God's will. And when he's ready to heal me, he will. And if not, it just wasn't his will. That's just ignorance of the word. And, and I've got to keep that in my mind. Because the enemy will come, especially if something is prolonged in your life, and he'll try to tell you, well, maybe it's not God's will to heal you. Maybe, maybe, maybe God has something to show you with this. I, I may have told you this story, a lady coming to our church and dealing with cancer, cancer in her body. I hate cancer, but cancer in her body. And she would get such a vibrancy and an energy sitting under the Word of God. And then she would go back to her church. She would never make a shift. You know, it's, it's amazing how people will hold on to their religion and die. Right? And, 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 and won't make a shift. They, because we've been going to this church all these years. You know what? Here's the thing. If I find out you're poisoning me with your cooking, I'm going to quit eating at your house. <laughs> you know? It's just that simple. If, 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 I walk, if I walk in your kitchen and you don't wash your hands before you cook, I'm not eating your food. Just not doing it. Right? And so, but people will hold on to that religion. Well, here's what I found out. They would come to our church on Sunday night, and she would get so full of the Spirit of God and so full of the Word of God and, and feel so much better. But then she would go back to her church, and her pastor, her pastor would tell her this. He told her this. You need to be careful trying to get rid of that cancer because you don't know what God's trying to work in you. Well, she died. Now, she went to heaven, and I mean, I'm glad of that. But she, what, did, what did she miss? What, what could she be doing for God? How, her grandkids are without a grandmother. Her children are without a, a mom. Her husband's without a wife. And so the point is, she was one of those people that went to that church that believed, well, God will heal me when he's ready. Well, that's only hope. It's not faith. Faith takes what God offers right now. It's mine right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And if I walk out the door and I feel better, great. If I don't feel better, great. I still have it. Right? You know, if somebody, like I said about that $10,000 check, I don't know how you would feel $10,000 richer. I mean, I, I, you understand what I mean? I mean, there would be some euphoria with it and some happiness with it, you know. And if it was a million, I might even be a little more euphoric. Right? But, you know, I mean, how does one feel like a millionaire or a multimillionaire? Or what? I mean, how do you feel? And people say, well, you can buy whatever you want. You can have whatever you want. Well, but I don't know. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know how you would. Does Bill Gates feel any different than me? I don't think so. Other than he knows what he has in the bank. Well, it's the same way here. If I walk out the door and I feel better, great. If I don't feel better, doesn't mean I'm not healed. I still got the check. Still mine. Still belongs to me. Amen. And, and here's the thing. The day will come when you'll cash that check. The day will come when you'll cash that check and you'll see it on the line item on your bank account. There it is. There's my healing. Amen. And then you'll know it. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you today. We're just so grateful for all that you're doing in our midst. We thank you, Father, for the healing power of God that flows through uh, our spirits and through our body in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just speak to every person under the sound of our voice. Lord, whether online or in this room. And, and we, yes, Lord, we speak to the pancreas to excrete the exact chemicals that need to be excreted in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak to that liver to be whole and well. I see that, Lord, that 75% uh, in, in operative, and we just speak to that and tell it to function in the completeness that it was designed to function. Lord, we speak to that body, that, uh, that the doctor's saying there may need to be more surgeries, 
and there may need to be more operations and more procedures done. And we declare and we say the body will heal itself and that it will heal itself in such a manner that it will be restored and it will be corrected and there'll be no need for a further procedure. And Lord, we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. And we speak to every virus, we speak to every blood disease, we speak to it and tell it to be whole and well in the name of Jesus and we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. I believe God. Amen. So please join us if you're available, if you're in the Little Rock area, uh, even if you're a little ways out for our great healing service uh, on this Sunday night. God's going to meet us and we're going to have a good time in the name of Jesus. Amen. So until that time, till we see you next Thursday again at 1.30, please remember to keep the switch of faith turned on and build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God. God bless you. Hallelujah.